Today we are using inexpensive items and some items just found around your home to make some beautiful decor pieces. If you're new, welcome. I'm Carolyn and today I'm participating in the Just Our Imagination Challenge playlist. I will have that playlist link in the description box. It is hosted by Kathy Jo DIYs, Rustic and Lace DIY, and the co-host this month is Simply Blessed Crafts. Their channel links will be in the description box as well. We have three challenge items we must use in our crafts. Aluminum foil, a funnel, and a napkin. Let's get started. I thrifted this little crate and I'm going to stain it with some antique wax. I got these funnels from Walmart for 97 cents and I'm just going to be using the smaller one for this craft. I cut off the loop, the little hanging loop here on this funnel, using just some really large scissors. I'm going to give both the funnel and this lid off of an old stain can a coat of truffle. I've got this wooden snake from the Dollar Tree, but I'm only going to need part of it, so I cut it down some with my miter shears. I'm going to use some wood glue and on one side of the snake um, apply the wood glue inside the little slits here. And then I will take a rubber band to hold, to hold it in place to keep its form. Once that lid and funnel were dry, I applied some European Gold Rub and Buff over that truffle paint. I got these corners off of Amazon, and I can leave the link to that in the description box. I believe they're called box corners. They're just little decorative, decorative elements, and I'm going to put one on each corner of the bottom of this little crate. I'm going to use mostly E6000 and a little bit of hot glue to attach this lid um, to the crate here. I took the very end of a skewer stick and that's going to be the needle. I'm wondering if you can guess yet what I'm making here, but I'm just going to use some hot glue to attach that to the end of that snake there. Now I am taking my little Dremel tool here and sanding off the spot where I'm going to be wood gluing this square bead to the crate and then our the part of the snake to the square bead there to attach it. But before doing that, I'm going to fill in all these gaps so this snake looks, you know, less like the snake and just a regular curved piece using some lightweight spackling from the Dollar Tree and then giving that a sand once it dried. I need a hole here in the bottom of this crate and so I just used my Crocodile Big Bite and it was pretty rough but I did sand that smooth later on. I cut off the skinny piece of the funnel I, um, using a combination of my little miter saw from Walmart and then once I got you know that started then I used my miter shears to finish that cut off. I used hot glue to attach the funnel piece to the snake piece, but then I'm going to go around where they connect with some E6000 and use some masking tape to cover that, and I'll be covering that masking tape later. Love is everywhere, its music fills the air, all nature seems. Just for some extra hold, I'm going to put some hot glue down inside the funnel. Um, just another place to have the funnel and the snake part attached. The sky. Over on the 
I'm using this burlap ribbon here to line the inside of the crate, um, which is the underneath of the crate now. And um, it's important, you know, for what I'm making to not close this crate up completely to allow sound in and out of this little crate. And fabric will do that nicely. This little wood round isn't part of the craft. I'm just using it so that when I attach these pieces together, um, it'll, it'll put a separation there so that I can, so that it won't be touching, if that makes sense. I used wood glue, and because that's all there was room for on top of that little square um, bead, and then I secured that with some tape just to hold that while that glue set up, and it actually is a very strong hold. I'm using one side of this ribbon spool. I'm going to paint it black and it's going to represent a record. I have a couple of decorative elements to this. A fake button and I covered that tape with some um, of this ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I have a little Bluetooth speaker, it's called an Echo, um, and I just wanted to make a cover for it, but still be able to hear the music coming out of it and it to be able to hear me. So this is a fake gramophone or phonograph. I looked up the difference and didn't come away with a clear answer. Some of you might know the difference, but I'm, I'm pretty secure in saying that it's a gramophone. Echo. Play Bach. Shuffling Johann Sebastian Bach and similar artists on Amazon Music. This is just a quick reminder that if you like this video, click that thumbs up. And subscribe if you haven't already. Those are free ways to help my channel out and it is greatly appreciated. Now for the aluminum foil craft. I took about eight layers of heavy duty aluminum foil and I'm going to glue all those layers together with some Aileen's Tacky Glue. There might have been a better glue to use, but um, this was just a complete experiment on my part and um, just winging it here. I have this frame out of a Dollar Tree canvas. I'm going to cut my foil down to size for that frame and give it a coat of antique wax. I printed out this wheat template here. I'm pretty sure if you search for wheat silhouette or wheat template, you'll come up with one of these. And, um, I'm just taping it here to the foil just to keep it steady so I don't move it around. And I'm going to use a sheet of styrofoam underneath because I'm going to be punching this aluminum foil like you might would punching tin. And I've, I've never punched tin or aluminum foil, so complete beginner here. And I just jumped into it and I found better items to use to do the actual punching. So sort of like the smaller and thinner your item that you use to punch this aluminum foil with, the better. And I found that using just a little paring knife or this fingernail file and then Dollar Tree for the long lines. And then for the dots, I'm using that Dollar Tree little plastic punch that you can find in their crafting section. Then I gave that a coat of this champagne bronze that I got from Walmart by rust -Oleum. I then stapled the um, layers of aluminum foil to the frame and I did put a little bit of antique wax on it. This by no means came out perfect but it was an experiment and I'll go from here using maybe some different glues and maybe using a baking sheet next time. Try that out instead of the aluminum foil. And there's a bluebird singing to his lady love above. A love song taken from the whispering breeze in the tree. For this one, I needed a square sign, and I found one at the Dollar Tree the other day in their summer collection. 
and I'm filling with their lightweight spackling, filling that hole there where the hanger was, and sanded that once it was dry. I'm going to give this a good coat of Mod Podge, and I'm going to let that dry. If music fills the air, all nature seems to hum a melody from the sky. I have this uh, spring napkin from the Dollar Tree, and it has a very pretty floral border once you open it up. I'm separating those layers, and I'm going to do the ironing method. Um, you know, once that Mod Podge has set up. And I did use a little bit of tape because I was worried that I was going to move it around as I was ironing it. And I did use some parchment paper in between the iron and that napkin. Now I think if you weren't going to distress it, you can see here that the darkness of the sign sort of came through. So I think it might have been prettier, but it didn't matter for me because I age up everything. And so it didn't matter that it was a little rough looking and that um, you could see the darkness of the sign, but maybe to paint it and then do the Mod Podge method on top of that. I've never tried that before, but that would maybe make it look more white. I have this quote here and I typed it up from Anne of Green Gables and I'll have that as a printable in the description box. I printed that out on some craft cardstock and I'm just going to use this tape runner here to attach that to the floral border. And you can skip this step, but I do like to make things look older. It's just, it just matches the style in my home a little bit better. This is another funnel craft. I'm using the smaller funnel out of that set. I ended up having an excess of funnels. I thought I needed funnels. I bought funnels and then I found out that I already had funnels um, later on. So I went ahead and made another funnel craft just sort of last minute and um, I had to cut that, you know, hanger off there once again. And it is pretty easy to do with a good sized pair of scissors. I believe I got this dowel from Walmart out of a Walmart pack. I, it could have been a Dollar Tree pack, but I'm thinking it was, you know, out of the Walmart crafting section. And then I'm just going to cut that down to the size I want and using a lot of hot glue, going to glue those pieces together. I'm using wood glue to attach this little Dollar Tree chalkboard, that's what it is to the top here, trying my best to center it. And I'm gonna use some masking tape to hold that on there while that glue sets up. Just as a little bit extra of a hold here, the wood glue did a good job gluing those, um, those pieces together. But um, just to make a little bit of a brace with some hot glue and wood glue and putting that on the back. I'm making this into a chalkboard, but I also wanted to be able to hang a little clip so that I could also, it could be a versatile piece and I could also um, clip, clip a photograph or something else there to use this in a couple of different ways. I stained the wood part on this with Early American Stain and gave the funnel part a coat of truffle as well as the little clip that I'll be using. I covered the truffle with um, European Gold Rub and Buff and then I'm taking just with my finger and going along the edges and applying some European Gold Rub and Buff just to the edges of the chalkboard there. Now this already is a chalkboard but I prefer the look of the green chalkboards over the black ones and I know this is not chalkboard paint this is just chalk paint but the internet assured me for whatever that's worth 
that if you do multiple coats of the chalk paint, you can use it as a chalkboard. I probably won't use it as much as a chalkboard because I don't have very pretty handwriting. And I've just never been into that, writing words on a chalkboard to display. But I will more than likely use it as a photo holder most of the time or a little, you know, card art piece thing. But um, just in case someone does write on it with chalk, I will season it. And so that option is there. Don't forget this video is part of a playlist. That link is in the description box of this video. If you're watching on a TV and you're unable to click the link in the description box, what you can do is ser search for and go to Rustic and Lace DIY's channel and the playlist will be listed under her playlist section. If it's not there, check Kathy Joe's playlist, but it's usually on Brenda's Rustic and Lace DIY channel. Go check out that playlist and see what the other crafters created. It's always fun to see what they did with the challenge items. But thank you so much for watching today. I hope you have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.